Sandra, turning back to that major news on Hunter Biden, his lawyers now saying that he will comply for a hearing or deposition if the House panels issue a new subpoena. It comes after the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees formally recommended to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress after he defied congressional subpoenas for a closed-door deposition. Meanwhile, Hunter has pleaded not guilty to nine tax-related charges during his first appearance in federal court. Our next guest was in that courtroom yesterday and has been extensively following the story. Let's bring in Josh Boswell, DailyMail.com senior reporter. Josh, great to see you. I, I want to put the uh, Hunter Biden tax court uh, issue on hold for just a second and get your reaction to this latest offer from Abby Lowell to the Oversight and Judiciary Committees for Hunter Biden to sit for either an open hearing or a deposition if they issue a new subpoena. Apparently, the letter <laughs> to the committees comes with a lot of footnotes about some suggestions on how this could happen. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's kind of interesting here. I can't help but see this as a bit of a climb down from Abby Lowell, Hunter's attorney there, um, you know, wrapped up in a lot of legal bluster. But really, he's done a complete U-turn here. He's saying, actually, no, Hunter would uh, sit for a deposition. Uh, I think that um, Republicans' response to this is likely to be fury, right? It's, it's Congress has issued a valid subpoena. Hunter mm -hmm. did not comply with that. He didn't show up. And he's facing the consequences now. So we, we're yet to see how this will play out eventually. But I, I think that um, it seems like Abby Lowell and Hunter Biden are a bit on the back foot here. Yeah, no, you know, and, and that is a point of contention to your point about a valid subpoena because Abby Lowell is claiming that the current subpoena is not valid because the House had not voted to launch a full impeachment inquiry, but that if another subpoena was launched under that resolution, then they would comply with it. Yeah, it, it seems here that um, there is, that's where the legal argument lies, mm -hmm. right? And, and I would assume that um, the the House Republicans would say, well, no, you know, we have the majority in our committee and we offered a, um, you know, a, a sit down chat with Hunter Biden, not under subpoena. Um, he, he didn't respond to that and, and declined. And so we issued a subpoena through a valid vote. That's going to be their argument here. And, and they would say it is valid. Um, Abby Lowell is saying, no, uh, this isn't valid because you hadn't voted for impeachment yet. Uh, it, it seems like there is a, a legal wrangling here that's yet to be ironed out, but it seems on the face of it that Congress is in the right here, right? They, they do have the power to issue subpoenas if there is a majority vote on that by a House committee. Well, if there is a legal wrangle to be had, you can bet that Abby Lowell will be wrangling it. All right, let's get to the tax court. Uh, you were there yesterday. What was the mood inside the court? Uh, what was Hunter Biden's demeanor like? Yeah, it was fascinating being inside that courtroom. I mean, you know, think about six months ago, um, you had the situation where Hunter was about to strike a sweetheart plea deal with those Delaware prosecutors. And, and now, uh, yesterday, when he walked into that courtroom, I mean, it felt like the, the weather in Iowa had entered Los Angeles <laughs> because the reception was frosty. Um, you know, it was completely different to that, um, that sort of sweetheart situation he had a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't even acknowledge the prosecutors sitting opposite them. You know, Hunter was shaking hands and smiling with some of the court staff. But then as they were sat there waiting for the judge to come in, you know, there was sort of 10 minutes or so before the judge came in, Hunter was looking quite nervous. You know, he was, he was pushing back his hair. He was wiping sweat from his upper lip, it looked like. And then um, at one point he was looking over at the prosecutors and he adjusted his collar and, and uh, took a deep uh, breath in. It looked like a, a man who was under a lot of pressure, who was very nervous, but trying not to show it. You know, if we could put up the, uh, the video of him at the Congressional Committee hearing the other day, seated with him was his attorney, Abby Lowell, and on the other side, Kevin Morris, uh, there just to his left, to his right on your left side of the screen, who, of course, is known as his sugar daddy, who paid his tax bill and apparently is footing the bill for a documentary to be made on Hunter Biden. He was not there yesterday. Give us 10 seconds on, on the unusual nature of that. Very significant, I think, that he didn't show up at this hearing yesterday, whereas he did show up in Congress. It's because he, the, the investigation has got uncomfortably close to him, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, in the indictment against Hunter, he's referenced as a, a, a personal friend who has loaned a lot of money to Hunter Biden. I think he wants to try and distance himself from this prosecution. All right. We'll be uh, watching this going forward. The court date's set for June the 20th. Josh Boswell, the DailyMail.com. 
Good to have you with us. Have a great weekend. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.